Hey everyone, welcome to the Spirit of the Outdoors. And I am at the Turtle Flambeau Flowage uh, in Mercer, Wisconsin. And I am on a five day, four night paddling trip uh, on this flowage. It is gorgeous out here. The only problem right now, and I didn't expect this because it was in the, it's been in the 50s today and it's gonna get a little cold tonight, but the mosquitoes in this campsite right now are just terrible. Um, they're, and I've got bug spray and stuff on and it is, they're swarming. And right now it's, they're not too bad. But um, anyway, <laughs> I'm having a great time. Uh, I did a four mile paddle. Um, we, uh, my wife and I are, she's staying up at this, uh, cabin this dead horse in it's the chalet cabin that's up there and she's staying up there I paddled four miles down to this campsite this is R2 R stands for rustic they have over 60 campsites um, in and around this flowage uh, on, on islands and along the shores some of them are rustic which means I'm just gonna turn the camera this is the rustic site it's very small. There's a fire ring. This trail goes off to an open air commode, toilet, just kind of out there for everybody, but it's pretty far back in the woods. And that's it. That's it, that's all that's here. The, the, the campsites that have F on them the, they're called family campsites. They have the same stuff, only there is a table. There's a picnic table there. Uh, I chose this one because I just kind of wanted to, kind of, it was a good distance. I'm gonna try and make a round trip around the flowage and we'll just see how this goes. This is the first time I've ever been doing this. And you can see uh, the bugs. I am using this inflatable kayak this is a Sea Eagle 330, the SE330. Um, it, it says it right down there, but it's upside down. I've got it upside down right now after being here. I want to put it upside down like that. So if it does rain or anything tonight, it doesn't get water on the inside. But um, this is a great little inflatable kayak. It's, it's not that expensive and it's fairly durable. Um, this is this is pretty thick material. I've had it for about six years now, and I've taken it out on lakes and rivers. Uh, you know, not fast flowing rivers, but I've taken it out on different things like that. This is the first time I'm doing a camping trip on this. So I've got I've got um, dry bags that I've I've loaded in here, and it works pretty well. Uh, I'm really quite pleased so far. This is the, like I said, this is the first day. I just went four miles. So, I'm sorry about the sun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, um, so uh, this is the first time I'm doing this and I'm, I, it's been really exciting. So uh, I took off at about three o'clock. Um, I paddled for about two hours and, and I got here. So I was making fairly good time. I had no idea what kind of time I would make. I the times I've been out on the on lakes and stuff like that I've kind of got a sense of how fast I could go but uh, I really didn't know I really didn't know if I'd be going two miles an hour three miles an hour so I, I did fairly well and this is a beautiful area I'm gonna walk down here I'll show you some of the flowage hang on I'm gonna spin the camera around again and hopefully try not put it in the Sun yeah so this is the turtle flambeau flowage and it is massive out here. I came from way up there, way, way up there, four miles up that way. And um, this, is just a, this is just a little slice of it. I'm gonna try and get more footage as I go around. So those of you who are interested in doing the turtle flambeau flowage in Mercer, Wisconsin, kind of the north woods of Wisconsin, um, you get a sense of what this looks like. These little campsites are really nice. 
there's like I said there's no no frills um, I'm heating up some water for some some dinner here and uh, of course I always do this this is the Tox titanium uh, 750 I think and I always forget to pull these out and it's so, thankfully it's not too hot right now but I always forget to do that there uh, so yeah the Tox titanium 750 I think this is and nice little nice little uh, cup kit with a uh, isobutane and a one of the inexpensive little um, stoves with the with the ignition on it so yeah it does me well I've used it I've used that many years too so um, but yeah it's it's been a gorgeous day uh, it was in the 50s so it was a little cool when I started off it actually feels warmer now than when I started but um, <laughs> it's it's something it is something it is a great time out here so I'm just enjoying uh, again this is the first day there's a it's a Saturday um, it's supposed to be cool tonight it's supposed to get down to about 37 38 degrees so that would be nice I would kind of cool things off and just kind of get rid of some of all these bugs tomorrow is supposed to be in the like sunny all day long in the 60s so that's great paddling weather I don't mind that at all this water uh, is is unbelievably warm I couldn't believe how warm it was and um, but anyway uh, yeah so I'm gonna paddle tomorrow I think about five miles or so I, again I probably won't need to a lot of time but I, I couldn't tell how fast I was gonna go and maybe I'll if I looks like I'm gonna get there rather quickly I'll, I'll kind of look around and and do some some exploring in this flowage but uh, this is this is great it is a great time so then I'll go and do that tomorrow Monday it looks like it's possibly gonna rain sorry I keep going into the Sun T uh, Monday it looks like it's gonna rain possibly there's like a 40% chance of rain so we'll see and possibly thunderstorms in the afternoon it's gonna get in the 80s <clears throat> so that could be a little bit of a of a challenge uh, we'll just have to see what happens on that day because then I might I might not paddle as far there are like I said these are first come first serve campsites I do not have to reserve these so I've got them all programmed into my GPS there if you go on to the turtle flambeau flowage association website they have a PDF that has a listing of all the campsites and their long longitude and latitude their GPS coordinates for all the campsites so I put them I put most of them in the ones that I was most likely or possibly could go to and um, so they're all in my GPS and all I got to do is if I think that I don't want to go as far as I had planned then I just pull up another one and I can pull right into that one and like as long as there's nobody there they're first come first serve and they are not there's no no fee for them these are free so this is a really inexpensive trip when you think about it um, it's just getting up here and you know you gotta bring your food and all that kind of stuff but um, what a great place so far unbelievable lots of fishermen out uh, this is kind of the first I think this is the first weekend that they can uh, they can fish for musky so and uh, this is a great place for musky walleye and northern this is an incredible fishing area for all of that this whole flowage so there's lots and lots of fishermen out came across lots of boats and um, so yeah it there's you know it's not again too it's not you're not so isolated that if something does go wrong that you couldn't you know find help um, you're not that isolated so this is another one of those forgiving ones that you're it's nice to be out because this is you know it's pretty right now I mean there's nobody around here it, it is uh, isolated but not like so far out there that you can't you couldn't figure out how to get get out of things so especially when you're on the water in an inflatable kayak <laughs> who knows you know I'm hopeful that it holds up and uh, but you know something catastrophic would happen it is a three chamber uh, uh, kayak so if like the floor something catastrophically happened to the floor and I couldn't patch it that would deflate but the two sides would stay you know and so yeah 
would it be a hard paddle absolutely it would be you know really tricky but you know i could i could get somewhere and probably get help or or you know get to you know get enough to like get out of here um so like if a side chamber went yeah it would be again difficult but hopefully you wouldn't have a catastrophic three chamber uh tear in all of it so unless something comes through and kind of rips it to shreds then you're kind of then you'd be yeah hopefully there are bear up here but i have not uh i don't think that'll be a problem i will be hanging my food and i also have a bear canister that i'm just going to set out there uh it's just kind of nice when you have a, when you have a kayak it's kind of nice because you can take a little bit more luxury items things that are a little bit more heavy than when you're backpacking anyway uh, i'm going to do some more filming and hopefully you'll get a chance to see some more of this beautiful area up in northern wisconsin we'll see day two out on the turtle flambeau flowage and oh my gosh what a great day today beautiful uh, in the probably the high 60s maybe close to 70 sunshine all the day all day long and uh, I had on um, uh, about a five and a half mile paddle uh, it, all in all it went really well except for the bottom part of my seat somehow deflated I gotta see if there's something wrong with it but I was sitting fairly low and kind of in water when I finished but other than that it's it's not a big deal uh, yeah paddled uh, took my time I stopped oh a couple of times uh, and had some snacks and had lunch so I just really took my time getting here it's it is only 2 30 and I'm at camp so it's going to be a long, long afternoon and before I even have dinner and then get ready for bed and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, this is an incredible area. Just incredible. I, I, I cannot get over it. It's just fantastic. Heard loons last night. Beautiful. Um, this is my campsite. I'm, out, I'm on this island. This is great because I'm on an island. And back this way, right up here, uh, is the open air pit toilet, right up in that area, somewhere right up there, up there. And uh, when you walk up there, you can almost see the other side of the island. So it's not a very big island. And uh, so this is my island tonight. There's no other campsites on this island. I'm it. This is excellent. Yeah, this is my island tonight. Jim's Island, it's great. <laughs> it is wonderful. Uh, just a beautiful day. Um, question is, don't know what the tomorrow's going to bring in terms of weather it, it could be iffy uh, if it's raining in the morning and stuff I'm going to just I'm just going to stay here and hang out for a while and see if it blows over and if it continues to look like a bad day I'll spend another day here or I'll move up closer and figure something out that's a great thing about these first come first serve campsites I can make this up as I go along. There's 60 of them out here all along this flowage, all over the place. I've got all of it GPS. I've got it all. I've got a little map so I can take a look and say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it to where I want to get to because of the weather. I may go over here and then 
end up closer to where I'm going to finish. Who knows? That's the great part of this. It just it's it's all a mystery. And, you know, it's all kind of like, hey, what what's going to happen next? I don't know. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. I'm I'm really excited about this. This has been been a great trip so far. And it's only day two. So only day two. <laughs> day four. Eh, it could be a different story. <laughs> but this is great. That's just been great. And um, anybody wants to come up here, this is uh, now sometimes. Um, there are lots of lots of fishermen, speedboats, you know, bass boats, that kind of thing. Um, they do create a wake for small craft. So if you're not really steady in a small craft, that can get you a little freaked out. Um, but it's not bad. The wind blows a little bit. It can create some waves, but I haven't seen anything huge white caps or anything like that out here yet. Um, let you know tomorrow if we have thunderstorms and what this what this turns into out here. But uh, I, I've been very confident in in the paddling ability. And the thing is too, you, when you look out here, look out here. Um, there's you know there's land. You know there's land over there. There's land over there. There's you know you're not in a place where you can't get to land fairly fairly quickly if something blows up you, you're not you know two hours away from it so it's not so bad so here it is and I'm gonna make get my camp set up and I'm gonna replace this battery because it keeps going on me and and uh, I keep thinking oh maybe it won't be that bad but no it's, it's getting down there again so uh, here it is this is our nine campsite rustic site nine and I am going to have a great afternoon sitting here and, and thankfully that here so far the bugs aren't bad I'll let you know at six o'clock last night the bugs were terrible where I was um, but I haven't noticed any since I got here so hopefully there's a nice breeze coming through here and it'll keep the bugs away uh, and it'll be a great night so yeah well maybe I'll get the thing back on a little bit later and and uh, show you the whole camp setup and everything anyway this has been great and uh, look forward to more. To more, I'll I'll show some more tomorrow, and and maybe get some paddling in as well. Show you some paddling around the area. It's a great day, and thanks for watching. Hey, it's day three, and I'm standing back in this grove of kind of dead pine trees, but just to kind of block the wind away from my campsite because my campsite is kind of on a little peninsula or just on the edge of an island. And the wind's blowing pretty hard and it's kind of on all sides but day three another great day started off a little rough thunderstorms came through i was it was very windy this morning and i was doing a lot of paddling through waves and trying to get to different areas i went kind of to island to island to island to get protection from the wind and i finally got into this little cove and then thunders started rumbling and I thought well I'm holding up here and I pulled off and got out of the out of the kayak and I was able to sit in a little area and I put up my uh, my tarp and thunderstorms rolled through a lot of thunder a lot of rain a lot of thunder a lot of lightning I was just glad to not be on the water for that but um, at two o'clock it was almost three o'clock it stopped and it kind of it was kind of sunshiny a little bit sun kind of came out just a little bit but it was enough that i could i was only about a half a mile from my away from my campsite so i quickly paddled over here and now i'm at this campsite and i'm going to show you the campsite i just didn't want to have all the wind i'll show you it and you can deal with the wind i won't try and narrate or anything and uh, you can just look at the the campsite I'll probably put music over the wind so you won't have to even listen to that but anyway uh, it's been a gorgeous time out here I have been just so lucky except for the rain you know but you know what I I figured it out I got off the water I was able to sit and enjoy and not have um, you know I just kind of sat underneath my tarp got my little chair out sat underneath the tarp let it rain listen to the radio it was great I had a good time you know uh, and I'm having a great time and so tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny after a morning fog 
and then I'm supposed to have a great day tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm probably going to paddle back in because um, Wednesday is, the wind is supposed to pick up again and I would be um, just paddling quickly in the morning. I'd be getting up early and, and just paddling because we have to be out of the cabin by 9. So I figured, eh, why, why chance having that wind and everything with the waves tomorrow or on Wednesday early and try to get in and try and beat the waves uh, and the wind. I'm just going to go in tomorrow. I've got a four mile paddle tomorrow, four and a half, almost five mile paddle tomorrow in the sunshine. And that's what I'm looking forward to because I'm going to explore some different areas of, of this great flowage. So I'll have four days out on the flowage, three nights, instead of the three nights. Because the, the fourth day wouldn't have been anything anyway except for trying to get as close as I could back to the cabin and then have a quick paddle in. And, and get out of here because unfortunately the checkout time is at 9 a.m. So uh, I just decided, eh, why not try and just enjoy this this beautiful day tomorrow and really enjoy the paddling and, and I can and I can paddle all the way back to uh, the Dead Horse Inn. That's where we're staying. So I'm looking forward to being out here all day tomorrow and just kind of enjoying. I'm going to go back a different way than when I came. So I'll be able to see some different areas and different islands and different part of the flowage. So I'll get to see a good majority of this of this grand, uh, beautiful uh, turtle flambeau flowage. It is uh, a beautiful place. If you ever get a chance to do this in uh, northern Wisconsin, near uh, just north of oh about 30 miles north of Manaqua in the and it's considered in the town of Mercer, Wisconsin. So. Beautiful area. I'm going to walk out to my campsite. It's right over there. And um, I'm going to walk out there. And so the wind's going to get bad. Maybe you'll hear the wind. Uh, if it doesn't get, if it's too windy, I'll, of course I'll have music over it. But I'm going to walk out there. You'll be able to see my campsite, what I'm going to be waking up to, what I'm going to be taking off from. This is a beautiful area. So just enjoy the little uh, tour now of my campsite.
Hey, it's day four and uh, I'm <clears throat> just getting packed up and as I was doing so I heard some crows and then I heard I know the sound of the, of the bald eagle and I heard it and it was coming from right up in there but I couldn't see the the crows of the eagle and then all of a sudden the eagle took off and just flew right over my head it was pretty cool uh, those are the great things I haven't seen a lot of eagles I was surprised I haven't seen a lot yet um, so it's kind of amazing and I've been listening and looking for them they're not always easy to just spot because sometimes they're sitting you know up in the trees and things but um, it is going to be sorry uh, it is going to be a glorious day and I am looking forward to finishing this out it is gonna be fantastic it's gonna be in the 80s today I'm gonna have a great um, great morning I'm gonna try and get most of the way before it gets really really hot because um, there's nothing worse than sitting out on the water the sun's beating down on you like that but it's also I mean we haven't had 80 degree days so I'm just looking forward to feeling the Sun and it is as you can see this morning calm so much different than yesterday when I got up and uh, looked out and you could just see the the waves going and it it was it was uh, interesting I have to do a little bit more um, a little more kayaking in heavier waves to see what I can handle and what I can't. The worst part about that was that you had to keep paddling. The minute you stopped paddling, the waves and the wind spun you around and you didn't know which way you were going. I mean, you didn't know, you couldn't tell, I mean, you could tell, but uh, you, you, you couldn't maintain anything and it would start whipping you around and the waves would start rocking you. So it, uh, it was a little scary at, at, for a couple moments, but you just like you said, you just had to keep paddling. If you kept paddling, you were fine. But there was a lot of work, so I, I was I was pretty tired yesterday. So, um, but I'm not going to have that problem today. I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and get to another another campsite and just take a break and do some filming there, and and hopefully you can see some more of this this glorious flowage that's out here it's just just fantastic when you look and I'm gonna turn the camera around here <clears throat> when you look out over here and I'm gonna try not to kill myself all right when you look out here and you see I don't know if you can see those little islands out there all the land out there is like little islands or shoreline in and around the area. Um, it's just fantastic. Move over here a little bit. Um, if you do come out here, I'm gonna try and do this the best I can without hurting myself. Um, the campsites are all marked like that. So they're pretty easy to find for the most part. I had them all, uh, the, the coordinates in my GPS. Again, the association, the, the uh, Turtle Flambeau Flowage Association has all those coordinates on their website. And all you gotta do is if you got a GPS, you put those in and your GPS will bring you right here um, that's what I did and it's really they're easy to find then um, otherwise map and compass if you're that good <laughs> if you're good at that and you can figure those things out um, it's not that hard you know you can take a look at the map you can kind of see the island and kind of figure out where you where you gotta go but um, this certainly has made it easy there's no doubt about it. Um, definitely easy to do with that. Um, I have a, had a couple of different forms of, of uh, navigation, so it wasn't. It was pretty easy to do. 
Um, and I'm gonna get the rest of my stuff packed up and I'm gonna get underway. I will try and do some filming. I'm gonna go up to the campsite that's marked F10, which is a family campsite, uh, which means that only the only difference is bet between the R and the F. Okay, if you look at this one, right? This is a rustic one. This is an R. It has a fire ring. This one actually has a bench. So, but they usually don't have a bench. They just have a fire ring. And again, the family ones have a picnic table. So, um, otherwise, they're all the same. Open air pit toilet back there. So, you know, it, it's better than digging a hole. <laughs> it's better than digging a hole. Uh, definitely better than digging a hole. But, um, but you are out there for everyone to see. Hey, if hey, everyone were here. <laughs> Yeah, there's not much cover. I mean, there's, there's no wall around it or uh, any kind of structure around the commode. It's just the commode out there. Just a, just a pit toilet. So anyway, uh, it's, that's part of it. You know, that's part of this. And at least, like I said, at least you have a place to sit. <laughs> and you don't have to, to squat. And that's, that's, that, that makes me happy. <laughs> Anyway, it's been good and I'm gonna do a little bit more filming and well I'll show you that so hang in there and look for some more Hey, it's midday, day four, and I'm at this campsite. I'm just taking a break here because I'm going to finish it, this out today, and um, that way I don't have to try and rush in. Our checkout is at 9 a.m. tomorrow at the cabin. I just didn't want to have to rush in the morning. This way I'm going to get in the afternoon, uh, have some dinner with my wife, and just enjoy the evening out on this beautiful this on, for this beautiful night on turtle flambeau flowage with almost a full moon so it'll be just a glorious night to just kind of enjoy so this campsite is f1 so it's a family campsite one which means again there's a picnic table that's the only difference between r and f when you're looking at these these are huge log picnic tables uh, very nice, very sturdy. That's uh, kind of nice. They, they're not going anywhere. And uh, of course the fire ring and then the open pit toilet. Probably somewhere back there. And as you saw in the opening there as I scrolled, as I kind of panned around, this campsite has pretty close. I can see water over there. So not quite 360 but pretty darn close because I can go all the way around. It's kind of nice because this is huge area here. Um, nice dragonfly, it just landed on my bag. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Beautiful dragonfly. Yeah, okay. Enough of the nature, right? <laughs> That's why I'm here, right? Okay, so uh, beautiful, beautiful setting here out on this uh, campsite. And uh, just over here, obviously some uh, land that was not part of the, the DNR, Turtle Flambeau Flowage, because there's people living there. So that's obviously uh, private land that did not get part of the the DNR but the rest of this is just incredible there are a couple places along there so again you know if you're out here and this is the first time I've done any kind of kayaking camping trip and so this was this is a very easy thing to do um, again if it's you know it will kick up if there's a storm I found that out and so you do have to 
uh, know your limits and I would now know that okay if it looks kind of rough out there and I'm at a campsite in the morning I would go out with a kayak just take it out just to see how rough it is if I can handle it if it's not I just stay at the campsite until it calms down or if I can yeah I can handle this and then I pack everything up and go so I learned a few lessons and that's what this is about too learning those things so I found out you know where my limits are and that was it was a hard paddle yesterday I was going crazy I you know it was just I was like why did I do this <laughs> and then I was like okay I learned I learned now I know that I'll go out and if it's if it seems too rough just come back to the campsite and go from there you know and stay at the campsite until it calms down if I have to stay over another night I stay over another night you know uh, beautiful day today and it got you know it got really nice at about two or three o'clock in the afternoon yesterday so <clears throat> I could have stayed at that campsite for the rest of the day and I could have left the campsite at three o'clock and still gotten to my other camp I could have got to my other campsite easily um, I could have got pretty much any of the campsites pretty much um, I, I could have paddled for you know because the Sun doesn't set the Sun was setting at like 845 it was still light out at nine o'clock last night so I could have paddled for three more hours if I started at three o'clock and that could have got I could have been you know to any of the campsites but so you know that you can really start pretty late and still get to a campsite I didn't have any problems so I could have stayed and then left at three o'clock in the afternoon and wouldn't have had any problem so learn a few lessons I don't have to leave I don't have to leave really early to get there um, if I want to go if I want to paddle a long distance during the day yeah I'll leave in the morning this morning I left it was 9 30 it's now noon it's almost 12 30 so you know I've been paddling around but I stopped and I'd paddle for an hour and then I stop you know so this is this is just a glorious way to do this you know especially when the water is like this you know the water is just beautifully calm wonderful it's just fabulous out here now when it does get into the the low uh, the high 70s low 80s the black flies come out and the black flies don't aren't just near land they're out on the water because when I was paddling several times I've, I've gotten a couple of bites on my ankles they love ankles so just you know if you're gonna do this and it's gonna get in this kind of weather especially in the beginning of June that's when the kind of the, they they start coming out that's when they start hatching uh, beginning of June and if it gets into the like I said high 70s low 80s you can bet that there's gonna be some black flies and just you just gotta cover up because there's nothing that keeps them off you can't use any kind of bug repellent or anything like that just cover up and they love to get the ankles so um, I, I even have pants on and I've had them covered up and they still managed to get themselves in there uh, just wasn't paying attention when they were getting down to my ankles so I got a couple of bites but anyway uh, they do come out so you just have to be aware of that but they're not here uh, for whatever reason <laughs> they're not flying around me now um, and this is just beautiful out here uh, you can see if you can see that boat out there I don't know if you can see that there's fishermen out there there's lots of people this is a big fishing area musky walleye northern big area for that so um, it's it's pretty incredible it's pretty incredible so mainly the people that are out here are fishing uh, very few right now uh, recreating I would imagine that it will be more recreation uh, as it gets warmer but right now the fishing has started and so um, that's a big big thing out here is fishing but uh, I'm having a great time doing this kayak trip you know it's been it's been fabulous and I will do it again and I'm hopeful to bring more people along with me do a little guided tour of this area and offer some 
spirit of the outdoors. I'm hopeful to, you know, maybe even offer kind of a, just a light retreat. Nothing heavy duty, nothing real, you know, very light spiritual. Because uh, it's spirit of the outdoors. But very, very light on the spiritual part of this. Just to just get people in touch with with uh, what's other out here, what, what the creation. Just feel grounded in that and help people to see this in a different light. And it's just glorious. So, um, hopeful to do that at some time in the future. This is a, this is one of the trips I'll do, and this I like this area. It's beautiful. So this is going to be one of them. Another one is going to be um, Pictured Rocks. That's a great area. So, and then it'll be a winter trip up into the Porcupine Mountains at a yurt. So those are three. Anyway, um, this has been a great great time, and I'm going to have some lunch and and take some time off here and and then get back in the boat and uh, kind of paddle on into where we're staying. It should be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. So anyway, um, this is it. This is a beautiful area. Again, Turtle Flambeau Flowage, Mercer, Wisconsin. Thanks for watching.